Welcome to the Moffitt Method Podcast, where longtime strength and conditioning coach Tommy Moffitt explores everything from the art of coaching, improving performance, sports nutrition, and mental training. Now, welcome your host, Coach Tommy Moffitt. Welcome to the Moffitt Method Podcast, and I am your host, Tommy Moffitt. If you're listening for the first time, please take a moment to subscribe to the podcast and share it with your friends. For more information about the Moffitt Method Speed, Strength, and Conditioning Program, please visit our website, themoffittmethod.fit, or email us at info at themoffittmethod.fit. I'm super fired up about today's guest and good friend, Kurt Hester from Tulane University. Coach Hester is the sport preparation coach for football at Tulane. Coach Hester has over 30 years of experience in the collegiate and private sector, and he authored the book titled Rants of a Strength and Conditioning Madman. He is a Louisiana native, a graduate of Tulane, with coaching stints at LSU, Louisiana Tech, and now his alma mater. The Tulane Green Wave football team finished with a 12-2 record last season with an historic win against USC in the Cotton Bowl. Welcome to the podcast, Coach. Thanks, brother. You're always glad to see you. Always glad to talk to you, man. Yeah. Yeah, this is going to be fun. So uh, let's jump in. Let's get to it, okay? Let's go. Let's roll. All right. So um, first question out the gate. Um, I've listened – and I try to do this for a lot of the guests. I listen to some podcasts that you've done. And in every one that I listened to, uh, you had mentioned Coach Hatch and all of them. And so of all the things that you took from Coach Hatch, what's probably um, the most valuable lesson that you, you know, that you learned from him that's influenced you in your coaching career? I mean, besides like all the technical, you know, the technical coaching, you know, and learning the, the all the, the nuances of, of Olympic, uh, of the Olympic lifts and sitting and just sitting in his office at night when everybody would leave yeah. and just talk programming. I think the one thing he, you know, he just would always force into my head. Cause even when I was coaching at LSU, I'd go, I'd, I'd train like three days a week with him. Um, mm-hmm. and I'd be the last one in the facility uh, at night and he would just like, Kurt, you got to stay in the eye of the storm. Yeah. You know, it's like, no matter, wh- no matter how, where you're at in your career, you need to be on the middle of that platform in the eye of the storm, the entire workout, whether, you know, and, and I always took that to heart where, as I'd always see coaches, especially when they're like our age, they yeah. get to the point where they just kind of, kind of handed everything off to everybody else. Yeah. And yeah. I've never, I've never done that. I've always been on the field, uh, you know, like I, 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 you know, on the especially field work. Sometimes I don't, I don't leave the field. I stay on the field the yeah. entire day, you know. And so yeah. it's just to stay in the eye of the storm throughout the entire training session. Yeah. And that, and that's just stuck in my head. It's just it, it, that's the one thing I think I relate to to uh, all my young coaches on our staff is yeah. that's what we're here for. Yeah. Always be coaching. Always be coaching. You know, and that's, you know, we'll talk, you know, you, I know we're going to talk about it, but that's kind of when it comes down to technology, you know, technology takes you, you know, it, it gets to a point where it takes you, you're so caught up in data. It takes you yeah. away from co- the technical aspects of coaching. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that is something, you know, as, as advanced as coach was, you know, he really didn't, uh, cause Tendos were around then and, uh, he didn't have any of that. Um, uh, his barbells were the tools that he used. In fact, I laughed. I mean, I was laughing out loud yesterday cause I listened to a podcast that you did with, uh, Zach Evanesh and y'all were talking about coach and you were trying to explain to Zach about his weight room and you kept saying there's bars and there's squat racks and there's bumpers. And then coach Hatch is standing in the middle coaching. And then the funniest (laughs) part was you go, Oh, and there were two power racks with bent bars and like 500 pounds loaded on it. And 
yeah. and those bars that stayed there, they were those two power racks were used for shrugs and uh, uh, jerk recoveries, and that was that was yeah. all that, that I was ever saw it. for. That's all I've ever, that that's all I've ever saw. Mostly shrugging. Yeah, <laughs> yeah lots of shrugging. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Zach, and so then I laughed the second time when he asked what your first exercise, if you remembered, and you were like, I think it was overhead squat. And that's as classic Coach Gale Hatch as you could possibly oh. get. Uh, so it was yeah. uh, it was fun listening to that. In fact, in all of the podcasts that I listened to, the Coach Hatch stories were uh, really you know brought a smile to my face and stuff. Um, yeah, he so would, even, when we, at, even when I was at yeah, even though, yeah, even when I was at ahead. Tulane, I mean that's what I loved about it. I would drive. When I was, you know, I would drive, leave Tulane at, would work with Tulane's athletes. I would leave yeah. at like six at night, drive yeah. to Baton Rouge from Tulane, get there at seven and he would stay and it'd only be one or two other guys. And he yeah. would stay until like nine o'clock and we'd work and I would do that two to three times a week. And, you know, then, then I left Tulane with LSU and I still would go three uh, I was still living in, in Covington. I was living on the North Shore, so I'd go visit him, train to eight or eight or nine o'clock, and then drive to Covington, and turn around, and drive back at four thirty in the morning to LSU. And it was just like a triangle, you know, like a like a, a you know, triangle going through, <laughs> you know. But he always took that time. Like if he was like, you know, if you want to get beat down three days a week, I'll sit here and wait and beat yeah. you down for three days. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and it didn't take a lot. Uh, because as, at Curtis, when I got to Curtis, I'd throw my guys in Jill's car and we'd drive up there and it was always, yeah. you worked out today, coach. And after a while I learned, you know, the lesson is to say, yeah, I worked out today, coach. I squatted because if you didn't, you were going to have a bar in your hand. and you were going to be. If I had to go visit him, I would sometimes wear jeans and cowboy boots and even <laughs> still I get on a platform. I'm like, coach, I got jeans and platform. I got boots on. I don't care. Just get, get on the platform. I got to show you something. So I'm in jeans and fucking yeah. boots, on, and boots on, you know, on a yeah. platform. I was getting yeah. away with it. Yeah, you were earning your hatch PhD. That's what he I called it. Day. Yeah, every day. <laughs> At the end of every second, you just worked one more day of progression into your PhD. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so great man, man. So it brought back fond memories hearing you talk about that. And so I also thought, you know, that's, uh, in a roundabout way, you know, that's how I met you. And it was because of your relationship with Johnny. And, uh, you know, I'm so for the listeners, Johnny long was a Gail hatch lifter also. And, uh, Johnny is the one who introduced you. The first time I met you is when you, you came up to help us with our strength and conditioning clinic at Tennessee. I don't know if you remember that, but that's, no, I, I'm I almost that. positive when that's you and when you and I first met. Yeah, that was our first, that's when we first met. I was, I did all the speed. I had like uh, the, 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 the video, the, video, room, the critique, video yeah. room, the video critique of all the, all the uh, 40 yard starts. Yeah. Yeah. That was uh, probably 1995 or 96, somewhere. Yeah, so it, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it was still. I was at LSU. It was, I think it was my first year, my second year at LSU. So it was, uh, yeah, it was 96, my second year at LSU. Yeah, yeah. a long, long time ago. Yeah. Um, so before we get into what you do on the daily at Tulane, I really wanted to talk to you about the Australian. Uh, study abroad trip that y'all did with the football team because I follow you on social media and I saw y'all in Australia and I thought that was really neat and I don't know what the uh, context of it was but I wanted to hear what all y'all did and uh, what was the purpose behind it because I think that's good stuff yeah they they you know, you know Tulane being such an academic type institution uh, they, you know, they do some pretty uh, extensive study abroad trips, you know, with, with, that, with the, with the whole student body, but actually with mm -hmm. the student athletes in every sport. So they didn't do anything the COVID year. So th this was like an unusually large, uh, group of, 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 athletes going. So there were 70 total. 
and 40 were football players. So oh, wow. you have to be a, a, a junior, uh, 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 you know, going into your junior year, a rising junior, and you have to be in really good academic standing. And it's a, it was a, a sports sociology class. So we went down and uh, like when we visit, like, you know, the, the Olympic Center where, you know, the Sydney Olympics, so went through all the different venues, uh, uh, rugby league, which like, rugby league was awesome. So we went to their national headquarters. Oh, actually, wow. See, that's awesome. Yeah. Trained. I mean, trained, tra we actually trained there. Um, you know, their weight rooms are they were there, you know, uh, you train rugby re relatively close to American football. So mm -hmm. the weight room was set up just like most American weight rooms. And then it had a rugby field right outside. And we, you know, we, so we trained there one day had, uh, uh, one of their team captains give a unbelievable speech on culture, uh, class on culture. Um, we went to some rugby league professional games, went to some Australian league professional games, uh, went to the Australian, um, sports hall of fame, which is kind of, it's, it's almost like, um, uh, like Canton, Ohio, yeah. like they had a hall of fame, but it's every sport. So it's huge yeah. it's at the bottom oh, of, wow. Yeah. So it's every sport and it's, it's, it's massive. And it, and so it's at the bottom of their, their biggest rugby Australian rural stadium and it seats almost a hundred thousand. And it takes up, you know, one whole side of the stadium. Uh, went to the Rod Laver uh, tennis uh, uh, Institute where they have the um, Australian open. Yeah. Uh, at, with them went to the, uh, the, the national, the Australian national cricket, uh, association, uh, home base where they had the cricket fields, their training centers, yeah. uh, learned like our guys like learned to play cricket and they were really awesome. Um, yeah. and, they were, and a couple of them were USC fans, which was really good, you know, considering we beat them in the yeah. bowl game and kind of dogged <laughs> them out like that. Um, yeah. but we went, to, you know, cities with the Sydney, went to Cairns, went to, uh, Melbourne, uh, mm -hmm. got to, you know, swim on the, uh, great barrier reef and, uh, in, in Cairns and, and oh, go out there, yeah. which was really, 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 really wild. Um, so we were, we're there, it was 12 days, you know? Yeah. Um, so we're there for a pretty long time. Did a lot. We did a lot. I mean, it was a lot. I mean, we were, we were averaging over like just walking over 10 miles a day. Plus we yeah. trained any, 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 any field I could find sand volleyball court, like, you know, if we play sand volleyball, we play sand volleyball for three hours, two or three hours. Yeah. We play basketball, we play basketball for two hours. Found a couple of uh, uh, fields to do speed work on, um, you know, like parks. Um, yeah. Found a couple of different, like, archaic uh, health club, like, you know, like 1980s. I saw gym. that. Yeah. 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 And, so, uh, and, and, you know, and so we still train. I mean, we probably came back in, in better shape than when we left. Yeah. I mean, we trained, yeah. we, we actually trained a ton while we were there, which was really good. But it was a, uh, you know, for uh, most of these guys have never been out of their home state, you know, uh, you know, uh, the only time they've, they've been out is, is, you know, on game day, you know, flying from city yeah. to city. And all you see is the hotel and the stadium, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, they, you know, uh, they really had a, an unbelievable time. But the, the experience, like half the players were like, I'm moving here. You know, yeah. I'm, oh, it was like, yeah. you know, I want to live in the, you know, the because it's one of the cleanest countries uh, there is. The yeah. people are fantastic. They're, you know, it's about as American type of country as, as you can get, uh, yeah. not be America. Um, yeah. Big into their sports culture is huge. Everybody bikes, runs, it's kind of like Denver, you know, like Colorado, mm -hmm. everybody bikes, runs, hikes, swims, yeah. surfboards. Uh, I mean, they do a ton of stuff. They're just super, super active. Um, it was really just a really cool experience. Did y'all see any Aussie football? The Australian rules, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yes. uh, w uh, women's and uh, and men's. Oh wow, yeah, uh, it's an incredible op something like that is incredible for young men and women that age because, and you know how it is, man. Those a lot of those athletes on y'all's team and in y'all's program there, they've been playing sports their entire life, and their summers were eat up with training for football or training for basketball and. To be able to go off and do that, man, it's got to be an incredible trip. That you know, the, and and to get college credit for it, you know, there were there oh, was yeah. classes. Yeah, I mean, they, yeah. we had class. We had probably four, four or five different classes uh, with speakers, and they had to do some, uh, you know, they, they had to do some work, uh, uh, you know, uh, computer type stuff on, on, uh, you know, on different things that we did and write papers yeah. and stuff. But it didn't take that long, and and you know, and, and literally, I mean, we were going twenty four seven. Yeah. I mean, it, it was, 
it was it was nonstop, six thirty in the morning till, you know, till two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did y'all take some Tony Sacheries with you? What was the food like? No, you know, the food is the food was awesome. I made it, like, yeah. you know, um, I you know, being from South Louisiana, there's not a whole lot I, I won't eat, yeah. and so I mean, I, like, you know, I'm big and you know, I've had kangaroo a bunch of times and. I made I made every every player that would eat with me. I said, you know, we're ordering kangaroo, we're ordering crocodile, um, you know, and they and they loved it. They're like, man, coach, this is really really good. So they eat crocodile tails down there. Yeah, they do just like alligator. They had uh they had yeah. uh we had some crocodile, um, uh, so it was almost like crocodile boudin. You know, yeah. we had crocodile sausage. Oh, cool. and stuff. Yeah, so it was pretty good. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, and I'm sure we'll throw in. I, I like throwing in the Louisiana references to stuff, so we'll we'll get into some of that later on too tonight. So, um, here's the thing, uh, because um, you know I wanted to get right to it and get in the nuts and bolts, because whenever I get an opportunity to sit with somebody with, like you, you know, I want to get in there deep. And so, the first thing that I want to talk about as far as nuts and bolts goes is about your running program, because, you know, I think everyone, when you're coming up through our profession, I think it's important that you're great at one particular thing. You know, you got to find your niche and then you build, you develop your experiences around it. And for you, it was the experience that you spent with uh, coach Shaw and the running, you know, the, the the type of work that you did with people in the running program and stuff. I think you were, uh, you know, a big driving force in how we condition and, and develop the sprint speed and stuff in college football today. So can you discuss the running program at Tulane and how you, especially now, how you progress from June through July and then into training camp, if you don't mind. Uh, I think too, it's, it's, it, I start in January really um, because, you know, it, you'll lose speed, you know, plus or minus five, five, yeah. three days. You know, so um, I don't, especially like in January, I don't, you know, in February, I don't do a lot of conditioning. Mm -hmm. I don't do a lot of conditioning period really I anymore. I used to, I used to think, you know, that the most conditioned, the strongest and the most conditioned team yeah. is going to win. And, and that's what we were told. And, and that's, and that's, I mean, because we were strength and conditioning coaches. So it was all, yeah. I mean, the moniker says it right there. So yeah. we, we just like, okay, you're going to lift them, get them as strong as you can. And then you're going to, you, and then you're going to run them until they, you know, they can withstand, you know, you know, a four hour game and, and run all day and, 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 and never get fatigued. But you know, it, it's a, de it's a detriment to speed. So, um, is a detriment to developing a, a skilled athlete at a position. So, you know, now it, it's, it's, you know, we start back in January with some basic things. It's like a lot of mechanic, basic mechanics of acceleration, basic mechanics of jumping and landings again, just kind of rehashing everything that we've, that you really delve into really hard in the summer. And at the same time, it's trying to get them healthy, you know, coming off a yeah. bowl game is trying to get guys to where they can move, move well and, and move pain free because there's yeah. so season so long now and you're so beat up at the end. Uh, but then, you know, but for summer, I, I you know, I progressed short to long uh, on, on our, my sprint work. And, you know, if you listen to like Tony Holler, he, you know, feed the cats, he's like a velocity guy. You got to do all, you know, there's yeah. acceleration with velocity. So it's like, you, you got to hit velocity, you got to be velocity, got to be velocity. And then you look at like Tony, you know, the two, I call them the two Tonys. Then you got Tony Volani who I've worked with a lot before in the private sect when I used to live in Nashville and he was in, and Tony's out of Florida and Tony been knowing each other almost as long as we've known each other. And, and Tony's an acceleration guy. So like, I feel like all I need, we, all we need to do is work on is accelerating through 40 yards and we're good. But what, what, which I, I, I look at both and go, yeah, you're kind of both right. And, but at the same time is if you don't build a callus at, at top end speed, when an athlete has to run down at top end speed at game time, it's very high chance he's going to pull because he's never developed almost that callus of running a few, a few super high speed reps at a, at a top velocity. So I don't do a lot, a lot of rep rep loads at, at super high velocities, but, but enough of a stimulus to keep them healthy. Right. You know, and, and, and to, and to keep us progressing through a, 
a, a training cycle, getting them strong, you know, stronger backside chain in the weight room at the same time as we're progressing to a longer, uh, to longer distances so that they can handle the forces and, you know, the forces that they're generating on, on every stride. So, you know, the, the first couple of like right now we're, we're in the middle of week three. And so we've, we've basically, uh, it's been on Mondays and Thursdays acceleration on both days with, uh, with our plyometrics and a lot of our plyometrics and acceleration will be horizontal based, uh, because you're pushing. Right. Um, and then, you know, when we do velocity work, most of our, because we do so much vertically in the weight yeah. room and we do so, and most of our plyometrics on the field typically are more vertical. So I, I do a lot more horizontal based stuff, mm-hmm. uh, in the summer because everything, you know, like power cleans or snatches or jump squats or trap bar jump squats or squatting or deadlifting, it's all vertical, you know, yeah. and then you're doing vertical jumps and you're, or, or if you're doing some French contrast, it's typically, you know, a, a, a vertical jump versus a horizontal. Mm-hmm. So if I do more horizontal jumping in the summer, because you do so much acceler- you know, if you look at your catapults, there's so, there's so many accelerations in a game, you know, accelerations, right. decelerate, reaccelerate. So you're going to, the athlete's going to benefit more on horizontal plyometrics than they are going to really be on vertical. And there's a, there's a, between the horizontal and vertical, you're going to get a carryover. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like rep schemes. There's a carryover between strength and, and hypertrophy depending on your rep load. There's, there's a gray area that, that carries right. over. So, um, then they're probably, you know, by week four is when we start introducing more velocity. So some velocity runs. And, and a lot of that is like run-ins or, or fly-ins. So it'd be different yeah. types of fly-ins where it'd be, you know, like an up and t- up tall and fall for 15 yards and then try to hold it for 15 to 20 yards, you know, and, 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 and in a relaxed fashion around 90%. Because when, when guys try to get like full speed on, on, on top end runs, mechanically they get, they just get terrible. Yeah, they get sloppy. And yeah. you're trying too hard. It's like, look, I, mm-hmm. I want you to move fast without trying. Like doing ins and outs. Like when you cycle through, when you accelerate, cycle, and then reaccelerate. So what we'll do is we'll have run-ins, whether it, it could be a, a lateral shuffle run-in. It could be a an airplane run-in where their hands are straight out to their sides. Yeah. And that for 15 yards and then go into and then go into a sprint. And then we, it, we, we, we try to get it to be a relaxed sprint, but still moving at you know, a little bit, a little bit, 90, 90, 90 plus, you know, but yeah. not, not at a hundred plus because right. they're going to, they're going to generate, uh, you know, the, uh, higher velocities in that, that 90 plus range than that hundred plus. Cause they're just trying yeah. way too hard. Yeah. Um, and it's just teaching them to relax. So we progress short to long, push it all the way through. Um, now this year it's going to be, for me, it's going to be really hard because we're pulling up our turf field in the, in the stadium. And that's my long field. Yeah. And so I, I lose it Friday and I lose it the rest of the year until, until, until camp. And we have that short feel, you know, how we have that short on feel the, yeah. mm-hmm. on the other side, like right on the backside, it's only 40 yards. It's 40 by 40. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, you know, uh, I just find that out that I don't have the baseball outfield <laughs> now yeah. today, which yeah. I was like, the baseball outfield is my long field that I, I, I probably won't have that. So guess you so say, you know what I'm doing tonight? I'm, I'm breaking everything back down, trying to figure out a way yeah. to get through this off season and, and, and do our, our, our athletes right by getting them prepared the way I wanted to four months ago when I wrote everything out. Yeah. yeah. Well, so uh, now that you said that, so what are y'all going to do? So one of my questions was, is, about how uh, you integrate what you do with uh, summer practice, you know, because, and I don't know uh, how y'all do it there, but you know, our, like we actually practiced twice a week. Yeah. And so, um, and it was just football. So every, all my running, I had to do separate from that. So my question was going to be, how do you integrate the stuff that, uh, that you need to do with the summer practice going on. But now my question is, where are y'all going to practice? Uh, Saints. 
We're gonna go. Yeah. We, uh, oh. We're gonna go to the Saints. We go to the Saints. Um, so what we have, what we call football school, which is practice. Yeah. So yeah, from Tuesdays, right. Tuesdays and Thursdays. So because we're a morning, a, most of our players are have afternoon classes. A lot of them are MB, uh, like uh, business and MBA and, and, and masters of business mm-hmm. program. That's all afternoon. Like like probably sixty percent of our guys are in business, and mm-hmm. they're. So that's all afternoon classes. So we have to do everything in the morning. So we're a morning, you know, so we start five, you know, sometimes five in the morning, sometimes six in the morning. We have breakfast could be at five. Sometimes it's at six. So um, we have football school on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So I can't lift. I can't lift on Tuesdays and Thursdays anyway, because football school, you know, with meetings, with, you know, it's just like a regular, it's like, you know, it's just like any during the season, like you have meetings. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then taping and everything else. And you go out football school uh, and then, and then they take a shower and they go to class. So, yeah. um, so we, I'll do on Mondays, we go out on the field first, all our acceleration work. And then we go in and full body lift, you know, but it's, it's more of a explosive, uh, uh, more of an explosive day, uh, more mm-hmm. Olympic lifts. Yeah. Then Tuesdays just straight football school. So I use football school as their conditioning. Yeah. So we look at the okay, GPS. Good. Yeah, that's yeah. We look at the load on. And so instead of me doing any kind of conditioning, I look at football school. We look at the loads. We go okay. So we try to manipulate what practices are going to be like in camp. You know, we kind mm-hmm. of we we slowly build it up throughout the summer. Uh, Wednesday, I, all we do is lift. So it's it, that's more of because it's stuck between two football schools. So that's more yeah. of, a, of our upper body strength day. Give our legs a little bit of a break. There's some backside chain stuff that we'll, we'll work on. Uh, there's some adductor and abductor stuff we'll work on, but it's mostly upper body. And uh, yeah. then, then Thursday, I get the first 15, uh, 20 minutes of football school. And we do some, acceler- we, as a team, we do all acceleration and, 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 and plyometrics before football school starts. So then we add that in and, it, but, but, you know, so football school is still the same amount of time. Yeah. Uh, well, no, actually it's not, it's like, I, you know, it, including my 20 minutes, it's the same, same amount of time. Right. So we look at the acceleration, we look at the speeds that we're, we're, we're attaining um, on Thursdays. Then we come back Friday, Friday's like, you know, we, we, it's like more of like a clean and jerk, uh, you know, a, a hang snatch. And then it's our heavy lower body day. So, and, and, um, and we like right now, our first three weeks, we're doing some, uh, some, some, uh, extensive tempo work for, mm-hmm. you know, 30, 30, 40 minutes. Um, and then that's going to go that we lift first and go out and do that, but that's going to push into all loaded, like some loaded, uh, extent, extensive work. So yeah. it'd be, uh, like pushing, pushing sleds, pulling, doing some, um, some hip work, uh, pulling sleds, uh, like like step overs, pulling chains, backpedaling with you know with bands, bear crawling with bands, um, doing uh, like uh, uh, single arm farmers walks, you know single arm farmer carries, yeah, um, you know fat grip farmer carries. Uh, we do a lot of grappling grappling work paired up. Uh, we do a lot of hand fighting, hand skill work, a lot of um, uh, just partnered up. Uh, almost like Greco wrestling, you know, where, right. you know, Not fighting. A, yeah. Um, so we, and we do all, you know, we do a ton of different variations of bear cross. So it, it's basically, it's all conditioning. Uh, right. Most of it loaded, except for the end where we're doing all the grappling type stuff. Right. Um, in the hand fighting work. So um, I don't really, besides the th- you know, three sessions on Friday, the first three weeks is the only three times I condition. And that's just to build up the capillaries and capillary mm-hmm. density so they can handle more when we get to the loaded stuff on Friday. Right. No, that's good. Um, and I like, um, you know, cause we did the same thing. We did football school, uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, generally speaking, sometimes we would change it up, uh, based on coach's schedule or something if he was leaving to go out of town, but we did it on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but I didn't, you know, so coach wanted to keep us what we did separate. So, um, they went for two hours, so I didn't get anything on Thursday, but I like the way you're doing, um, 
Monday and Tuesday. I love that Wednesday, uh, just lifting. And I think that's good, you know, cause, um, on days, the way it works in your schedule, you have days where you lift and run, you have days where you practice, and then you have a day where all you have to do is lift. So the guys are only coming to the facility one time. So that's the kind well, of dude, it, yeah. it's stuck between those two football. It's, it's, you know, that Wednesday, if I were to run them on Wednesday, Oof. then in, in, you know, it's, it's useless. It's just, you're, you're adding, you know, so much load and stress. It's yeah. not going to make them any better. And yeah. I'm going to, and I have the first th- four periods of on Thursday to do accelerate, you know, to do some true acceleration yeah. sport work. So if I ran them on, if I ran them on Wednesday, it would kill me for Thursday. Yeah. So yeah, it just no anything that I did on Thursday, it'd be null and void. It would be useless. Yeah. Um, and then I, I look at also, we also kind of modify Wednesdays too, depending how, how aggressive they are on Tuesday. And then mm-hmm. because we do seven on seven at the end. So I'm yeah. the only one out there and I have a clicker and I count the plays, you know, yeah. even though, it, even though they're on catapult, uh, you know, I, I go with the offensive coordinator and I'm to make sure they don't go over the plays that the coaches want them to go. Yeah. And so oh, I know. Cause I'm, yeah. Cause, Cause I'm not reading because I'm not reading it. I don't have a, an iPad out there reading, reading the catapult, you know, like off the field. Yeah. You know, I don't, it's not, I don't have, a, I don't have the iPad on the field, on the computer on the field. So I just have a, well, you know, a starboard hand clicker. And I just sit yeah. there and click plays. And if the coach tell me, Kurt, it's only 20 plays today. I, I walk out there and stop them at 20 to make sure yeah. that we stay on track and we progressively overload them throughout the, the summer. So they don't start out with 40 plays day one. And then we're shot yeah, the rest of the yeah, they're blown up. Yeah, they're blown up the because rest of the week. yeah, because if you don't watch them, you know they're competitive people. You're not twelve and two because you're not competitive. So those guys, the and that was an issue that we would have if if it was supposed to be a thirty minute, you know, seven on seven period, it end up being forty five minutes to an hour. Yeah, uh, because those guys are going at it. In fact, hey, this and this is a true story. So. It's been, I guess it was 2018, 2017 or 2018, because we were in the, we were at the baseball stadium um, watching Clay play. And I'm sitting, you know, the way Alex Box sets, you, the indoor is, you know, across the U High field and there's the indoor. So during timeout, I mean, during uh, between innings when it got quiet in the baseball stadium, I could hear this music and it was like bass, like boom, boom, boom. And Jill and a couple of people around her said, what's that noise? And I, and I said, I think our players or somebody's in our indoor because we had a big sound system in the indoor. So I said, uh, when the game's over, I want to go over there and see who's in the indoor. And it's like 10 o'clock at night. And so um, during the summertime or during the spring, and I, we went over there and I opened the door to the indoor. And if you hadn't known you would have thought that the LSU Tiger football team was practicing. Almost every player on our team was in the indoor and they had somebody had their cell phone connected to the sound system. And there must have been 40, 50 guys in there practicing. And that's the way successful college football teams are. And that's the way your guys are, I'm sure. Yeah, and it, um, it's, it's just education too. It's trying to yeah. teach them. Look, the body can you only have so much gas yeah. in the tank. The body can only yeah. withstand so much, and you're going to get you're gonna, either you're going to you're you're going to get slower, or you're just yeah. gonna, are you going to get hurt? And, yeah, get hurt. You know, um, you know, we have guys like that that'll they'll go. To, we, there's this nasty turf field in the middle of campus, you know, yeah. other side of Raleigh Center, and it's it's yeah, tur- I know where that's at. Yeah, old, old school Astro turf. So yeah. you know, and they'll they'll try to wear cleats on it, and every time you know they they go there to hide. So they had, so no one can see him working, and every time someone goes there, they get hurt. And it's like, yeah. look, yeah, you know, one, you're on Astro turf with cleats that's designed for tennis shoes, and mm-hmm. you know the and I, and I went through you know at the beginning uh, our first meeting this summer, and I I broke down the amount of volume that they're working, and and if you're going to work extra, so I've got them I've got them pretty well contained now because now when we work extra. I said, there's a way to work extra. So we'll work a lot of martial arts hand skills. Yeah. Where you, you're only move, you're only, you're, you're using your hands, you're only moving three or four yards. Yeah. Um, we, you know, with, with receivers, I said, look, you know, 
we work uh, releases because it's just right off the line, two steps, two step releases. We work vision and cognition, work a lot on peripheral vision, on depth perception, on recognition. Uh, we work on catching all these different like Hico sticks, tennis balls, bricks, um, heavy balls. Um, and so you can do that without moving. So you don't have to yeah. run a whole route. And then, and then we spend, and, and then we have, and we have the jug machines out. And so we'll do a lot of work, extra work where there's very little movement, uh, in, yeah, very little minute movement or energy expenditure at all. And so we've got guys like pretty bought into that right now. Cause we, cause yeah. I was, we spend so like, like, you know, from next week on, we'll spend, you know, three, two to three days a week where they'll come back late in the afternoon and like, okay, if you want to work late in the afternoon and we'll do it in the shade too, like we're yeah. not in the, in the sun and we, we just do it underneath the, you know, underneath the stadium and we'll get some quality work in that actually helps them on the field. Um, you know, you, you know, on offense or defense, one drop ball can be the game for you. So, yeah. you know, our, our goal is zero drops. So, yeah. We, you know, we spend a lot of time working on our hands and, um, and then with our offensive and defensive line, a lot of, we work a lot of time with martial arts, you know, working, working our hand skills and, you know, our, our, our motto, especially for uh, our defense is like, is if you're, if you're, if you, if you've been held, that's your fault. You allowed it. You allowed, you allowed them to hold you. You know, so don't whine because they're going to, you know, they're going to, they're going to hold you. And, you know, especially in our league. Holden's legal, I think. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's. Yeah, <laughs> unless y'all have the ball. <laughs> oh, I know, man. Golly, that drives me crazy. Um, you know, so you're talking about extra, and this was a problem. Uh, it wasn't a big problem, but there there was always a couple individuals that it was a problem with, and it cost us guys a couple of times. And that is players that go to work with the gurus, the, either the local gurus or uh, the D line expert in Houston, or you know, yeah. a wide receiver footwork guru. Um, do you? And I'm sure you talk to your players about it, but do y'all have anybody that sneaks off and does that? Um, we, when I first got here, there was a lot. There were, I mean, yeah. a lot of guys and. I think it's probably down to maybe, you know, maybe two or three now um, yeah. because, because of all the things that we've implemented, because before they didn't do a lot of, they really didn't do a lot of true speed work. And right. then on top of all the things that we're doing extra, you know, and, and then you got, you throw in like the academic standards of, of, of yeah. two line. And so, you know, there, and, and Fritz is coach Fritz is like, big on community service work. I mean, they do yeah. a lot of community service work and they do a lot of work at the university itself with like the other teams. Like they go watch, they're, they're at volleyball games, they're at, they're at oh, tennis cool. matches, they're everywhere. And yeah. they take pride in the fact that they support that, you know, our football program supports all the other teams yeah. um, and, and, and vice versa. So, um, I mean, their day is so, so caught up. And what we well, do is good, so, and coach Fritch is like, you know, he, he's pretty adamant about them not going to other, yeah. to other guys. He's like, look, we, the reason why we hired Kurt was because he, he was in the private sec. He's done all this before. Um, you know, and look at all the, all the things that, that we've brought since we've been there, uh, that they've never done before. Yeah. Um, and what we do is like, okay, so 4th of July, you're off for that week. You want to spend time with, with your private guy, go that week. And I've explained to them, like the most, like I was one of the few guys in the private sect that I looked at what the college coaches were doing. Show me what you're doing so that I can just work around it and, and do some things that are going to help you, but, but you're not, it's not going to lead to overtraining or you getting hurt. Right. Very few guys in the private sect would do that. Their egos are too big. They think they know everything and that we, I know more and I'm, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And then you're going to go do all your other stuff and then you're going to get hurt because yeah. you won't have time to recover. Um, yeah. And I, I said, because all they care about is using your name yeah. to get more mm -hmm. clientele and getting paid. They, they don't mm -hmm. care, really, they don't really care about you as an individual. I said, they're going to tell you all the things, they're going to, you know, all the things that we're doing wrong when their education background is not even in the, in the not even in sports science. Yeah. So they have no idea. And there's some guys that have, 
almost like when CrossFit first came out and Glassman was like, you know, there is no, there is no such thing as sports science there. There is, you know, um, there is no pro, there is no periodization. You just throw a bunch of stuff against the wall and do it at, 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 at hundred percent intensity every single day until your body falls apart. We know better. And just, they had that, they built this cult, like, yeah. you know, pro, that you train with us, you're the baddest human being on the planet. No one else knows what we know. They're, they're all yeah. bullshit. And you got some programs out there, you know, like the go to guys, you know, yeah. and it's like, yeah, you know, it's like, dude, you, there's nothing behind and they're just, they're developing the same thing. And it's a good business. It's a good business ploy to develop a cult and get people so firmly entrenched in believing in it, even though there's no science, there's no, I've, I've seen so many guys that they train in the league that have blown ACLs. But they don't. But they don't take. They don't take credit for all those blown ACLs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you know, so we, you know, we would have guys that would drive two, three hours to go somewhere and run routes for like two hours on a weekend. Yeah. And after, like here, because we have the real. Well, just like y'all, we have the. You know, you have the levy. Yeah. And so we'll train all week, and then I'll, I'll come in and like, coach, man, we. We hit the levy this. We hit the levy on Saturday. I was like, "What? Oh yeah, man, we killed. We were on the levy for like an hour doing doing, you know, backpedaling and and shuffling and sprinting." I'm yeah. like, "Guys, we just did all this loaded work yesterday. Yeah. What are you doing?" Yeah, they were probably at the fly, knowing two lane guys. They were probably over there by uh, the uh, zoo, Audubon Zoo. Yeah. You know, the yeah. the fly over there. Yeah. They were. <laughs> And, I, oh, and we try to do best. I mean, we do, we go, we spend an inordinate amount of time is teaching them why we do what we do. Yeah. I mean, every lit, this is how this, this exercise in the weight room pertains to your position on the field. This is what we're doing outside, how it pertains to this part of the game. And, and, and you know, it's getting, I've only been there a year. I've only been at Tulane a yeah. year. So it, it, it's the more we're going, now it's just like really educating the freshmen. Yeah. Uh, get them at speed. But for the most part, I think by the end of this year, it'll be uh, that they're ed be educated enough to go, okay, when we do extra, let's do stuff. This, this doesn't take uh, a whole lot of, uh, of energy out of our, out of our system so that we can recover uh, because they see, they watch, there's too much stuff TV about yeah. grinding about, you know, you got to do more to be great. You got to do far more, you know, they look at, you know, like, like Kobe videos. And I love all Kobe's videos. Cause I mean, the dude, you know, him and Michael were, were just, you know, just incessant about be, being great and how much work mm -hmm. they put in, but it was shooting a basketball. Yeah. In an air conditioned <laughs> building. Most of the time. In an air conditioned building. Yeah. So what, you know, it, it, yeah, it's great, but you know, you know, you know, with football, it's such a violent physical sport. There's only so much you can do and your body starts to start to break down. Yeah, so uh, when Clay Clay and Aaron played baseball all summer long, you know, we traveled everywhere. Brady didn't like baseball. Brady liked basketball. And so I was dreading the first AAU tournament that we had to go to. And uh, it, it was on, It was at the uh, Alario Center. First tournament we went to, uh, I guess he was probably 12, 13, 12 years old or something, we went to the Alario Center on the West Bank in West Wego, and it was air conditioned. And I looked at Jill. I said, "Where did we go wrong? We we traveled the other two around for ten years playing baseball, and it was a thousand degrees." I said, "Man, I could I could go to a basketball tournament every weekend." A thousand uh, degrees. No offense a against degrees. The a thousand degrees is slow. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. very slow. <laughs> <Yeah. hours. laughs> All right, so uh, since y'all, and, and you know, uh, this dawned on me because I wanted to talk to you about agility and, you know, uh, change direction and about the difference between those two things. And, um, and then it, it, you were kind of like me. Uh, you're in a situation where there isn't, a, you know, at this time in the summer, we used to always have a day where we spent on change of direction. Right. But now with football school, you don't, there's, you know, you want to do that earlier in the year, but can you talk about the difference between agility and change of direction? 
So I mean, agility is all reaction based. So you're reacting to a stimulus. So whether it be verbal cue, a, a human, a, a color cue, you're reacting to a stimulus where COD is, is, is pre-programmed. You're just kind of going to this cone, then you're going to that cone, and then you're going over there, and then you're coming back. So, I mean, I don't do a whole lot. I very rarely do now uh, anything that's CO is that's COD. You know, in nature, everything is 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 uh, agility. Everything has got a, a reaction component to it. And we'll do. Uh, we get into it. A, a, you know, a decent amount before. Um, in between spring ball and and summer, because we have a little bit, of, we have we have a, 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 a few weeks there, and then we'll yeah. get it to it uh, in in February before before um, uh, spring, spring football ball. and um, I mean yeah between spring football. So we'll go. So we'll get some done in February. We will get some done in April, and then I have I have um, two weeks. So week five and week seven, I, the coaches go out of town. Which is awesome. Yeah. Which they go and week six is like Fourth of July, so we're yeah. off that. We're off that week. Wish they'd go out of town week <laughs> seven, eight, and nine. It would be even better. But uh, but I got yeah weeks five and seven. So we'll put agility in uh, on Tuesdays on weeks five and seven, mm-hmm. and um, uh, and so we'll do uh, we'll do a lot of come to balance work uh, where you're you're you know you know whether it's a 10 yard move, movement into um, a two foot plant or, uh, uh, or into a coiled lunge or into a lateral set. And we'll do some basic mechanics out of that and then run a few drills, maybe, you know, coming out of different uh, progressions like uh, uh, doing some gallops into a coiled yeah. lunge or do, you know, a, a you know, lateral shuffle into a two plant, uh, a two foot plant stop. But, and then we then we move into um, true reactionary drills. So we'll have like six drills set up where they're partnered up and they're move and, and they're react whether it's one guy going against one guy or one guy going against two guys, and it's all reaction. So uh, like there's a uh, we call it a, 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 a three can reaction, where it's three cans in a line about a yard and a half apart, and they're you know, in front and they're 10 yards apart. And one guy's an offensive guy, one guy's a defensive guy. And in between the two, in between the three cans are, are your holes. So the offensive guy picks what hole he wants to run into, makes one cut to go into the hole. The defensive guy tags up like a side, we have a sideline tag drill. Um, we have, it's a triangle drill where they're all facing each other and different starts, like whether it's a backward seated or prone and, they run uh, it to a, a cone that's in a, in a triangle, and they run around one and one guy's offense. The other guys, the other two guys, are defense, trying to tag them in a, in a, in a short area. We'll do a tag. Uh, we'll do a tag game where I put a circle around uh, our, our logo in the middle of the field. Put six guys in there, and then we just it just tag. Like I, I go, Joe, you're it, and Joe runs fast as he can trying to tag t- tag guys, and then I change the it guy. In the, in, in the middle or there, until guys are tagged out and we'll play multiple tag games. So we'll do all reaction drills. And because in the difference between reaction, I think in COD and, and I don't have any, any quantitative data, but just watching movement and watching and listening to the foot plants, when you're planning reacting, the, I think the forces are so much greater than just running from cone to cone and, and yeah. planning. And because the, the fact that you're not thinking and it's just stick and move. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, working, you know, the, you know, adductors and, and flexors and, and just trying to get those stronger to, to handle the forces of camp with all yeah. the, how many times we DBs and receivers are going to, and linebackers and running backs are going to make those cuts. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wish we could do a little bit more to yeah. bulletproof, to kind of bulletproof them to a certain extent. Uh, to develop those callus, basically that callus, just like we try to develop mm-hmm. the callus on ham, you know, with their hamstrings at, at high speed running. Um, but I don't have that option. Um, I used to, like before we NCAA said you can yeah. practice, you can practice all summer. Yeah. But um, but we do have, you know, those two weeks where and 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 I split them completely up, so I get which we call tsunami is our O and D line. I get them by themselves and then I get thunder, which is our mids. I get them by themselves and I get lightning, which is our uh, receiver and DBs. And I get them by themselves. 
So I, I can get some really quality work with, with, with them uh, outside and, and really develop things just for their position. Now we train, we lift that way uh, throughout the whole summer. So even though I have to, I'm relegated to the whole defense in the weight room at one time and the whole offense, but we have three different workouts going on at one time. So Tsunami's got one set of racks, Thunder's got one set of racks, Lightning's got the other set of racks, and uh, everything's kind of designed, geared more towards their, you know, to their position. But, um, I, you know, football is a skilled sport. So the more you work on reaction and eye control, mm -hmm. the better they're going to be on the field. And I, yeah. I, I think, I think we, I, I don't think we do enough of it as a, um, as a profession. Um, I, I, a lot of it's because of what we're relegated to doing because of mm -hmm. football, football coaches themselves. Um, but what I found is our football coaches watch what we do. And now in football school, they're replicating some of the drills that they're, they're, they're and I, I've, I've talked to them quite a bit about making more, more of their drills more react instead of just running over a bag, you know, let's make the drill more reaction. And they have done a pretty, really good job of, of seeing what we do and taking some of those drills and going, oh, I do this drill this way. I can make it a reaction drill by just adding this. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, that's the game. That's the game of football. And so, you, you know, you were talking about how you think the forces are greater when you're doing the reactionary drills and, and games and play versus – uh, change of direction and agility. And I think it is. Uh, but my question was, is do y'all wear, when you go outside, do you wear the GPS uh, every time y'all go outside? We do it. Uh, I wear it. If we're, if we're testing, yeah. uh, like on, 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 a, on a, on a Monday, I'll, we'll, we'll put it on and, and, and look at our, um, our Broward and then you, and, and also utilize the, you know, uh, utilize uh, miles per hour too, but yeah. look at and, and our timing. We'll put them on there. We, we put them on, we have them on on football school, on both football schools. Yeah. Good. So we do get that information on Thursday of all, all our acceleration work on Thursday. Um, and then we also, once we get uh, like, we, we put them on on Fridays to look at our overall uh, volume on our, yeah. uh, our extensive tempo. And then we actually put them on 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 that on that those Fridays when we get to load it, just to see where we're at as, as far as total volume, uh, total load, even though we're going on shorter distances um, on those uh, on those Fridays. But we I mean we only have like forty eight units, so it, it's yeah. specific guys that we we put them on. Um, we don't have a hundred one hundred and twenty units, but yeah. But do we get do y'all use we, catapult? Just yeah, we use catapult. Yeah. I'd probably rather use Connexon or Stat than Catapult, yeah. realistically. Yeah, Connexon's doing uh, some good stuff, man. Um, you know, I've only looked at uh, the uh, Connexon reports, but some of the stuff, because I've never used it, uh, but some of the stuff that I've seen looks really good. Uh, well, with Connexon, too, because they started out as an indoor company with basketball, yeah. is yeah. that because when we were, you know, we go to the Saints indoor, all yeah. we all we get is load. We don't yeah. get anything else. So right. with, with Connexon, you can get, you know, whether you're inside or outside, you you can you still have all your data. Yeah. Uh, so when y'all go to Tulane, do the players drive or do y'all have a bus? Do y'all take? Oh, we buses? go to the Saints. Yeah, yeah, we go. We take uh, we take two, uh, three buses to to the yeah. Saints. That's cool. We got police escort, so it takes us like yeah twelve. Yeah, y'all take the Earhart. Y'all probably take Earhart, huh? Take Earhart. Yeah. All right. So, um, you know, and this this question came about today. Um, we were talking about going to the camp this weekend because we we actually found uh, we actually had like uh, ten. It looked like ten or eleven big pigs showed up on the camera. So I told I told the boys I said, man, we go to the camp, shoot some pigs, um, you know, do some work because we got some work to do. And then I pulled up the ten day forecast, and there's six days out of the ten 
where the temperature is going to be 98 or above. And, you know, with, you know, the humidity that we get here. So do you try to adjust uh, for, you know, the heat and the humidity here, or do you just roll right through it? A little both. I mean, we do, uh, we, we, we try to get our tsunami group and our bigs like to train the you know, this first group when it's, when it's earlier. Cause if you're gonna have a problem, it's typically gonna be a big guy, you know, yeah. it's gonna be a yeah. heat related. Um, and so they're our first group, you know, typically early. And mm -hmm. so that's 6 a.m. So, you know, it, it's, yeah, it's humid, but you know, yeah. sun's not even up yet. Yeah. And <laughs> lightning, feel bad for those guys, the skill guys, cause they're like, typically last, you know, in, yeah. in the heat. Um, and then like any, any, any kid that has, um, you know, any kind of issues, whether it be, um, um, issues that, that they've had in the past, whether, yeah. uh, it, it's, you know, uh, some health related issues. We, we put a red, um, uh, Terry cloth, uh, like LeBron headband on them. Oh, cool. Yeah. You can see them. So yeah, they got yeah. that red headband. You can see them from like a mile away. So, right. um, you know, whether they had their, their a kid that had diabetes or exercise induced asthma, yeah. um, you know, that I like we, that. I like that. Can, That's great. We can pick them out pretty quick. And, and then the, and the trainers can, and the trainers, because sometimes the trainers, like the young trainers don't even know, yeah. you know, the TAs and stuff. Yeah, you're right. And so, you know, um, then it's, it's easy to pinpoint them and pull them out. If there's any, yeah. if you see any distress whatsoever. Um, yeah. And then like, you know, because I, I weighed, uh, I weighed our, our tsunami, um, their everything like their pads, their helmet, knee braces. I wet their clothes, you know, wet their pants, wet their shirt, throw it on the scale, and it was like fifteen or sixteen pounds yeah. total. And then the you know the mid guys, the thunder guys, they were around twelve, and um, the lightning guys, uh, the skill guys, they they were around ten because they don't wear anything. Yeah. You know, they go out there bunk naked if they could, yeah. uh, you know, just a helmet <laughs> because they yeah. want to be light. So what, what I'm going to do, do is, um, is slowly add, uh, a, you know, five pounds and 10 pounds. And then with the, with the yeah. bigger guys slowly add up to 15 pounds of weight, um, yeah. to get them used That's to cool. carrying that load because instead of just waiting to the first day of camp and all of a sudden I got <laughs> now helmet on and everything's yeah. holding the heat in, um, and, and I used to, too, and back in the uh, few years ago when I had tech, I used to, uh, on a couple of, on two, uh, two days a week, um, we would wear um, a skull cap yeah. just because, just because they're going to be wearing helmets all day and just getting used to, you know, the, the, the heat. And then we'd water, we'd water, we'd spray them down after to cool them off. Um, but because, man, you know, it, people up north don't understand. You know, people in Cali don't get it. You know, I went to high school in Cali. That, you know, it's no humidity. Temperature's the same every day. Yeah. Um, you know, how hot and how hot turf gets down here, yeah. especially if it's like um, if you've got rubber, rubber in the turf. You know, um, like I was telling you before, we played Grambling in, in September. It was 140 degrees on the turf, yeah. and the cleats were melting. And yeah. I've it, seen yeah, people don't get realize how bad it gets, you know, in, in the South. And that's, you know, but you have to, you have to train in it to acclimate yeah. it, to get, get ready for camp. You're damned if you do. And you're damned if you yeah. don't. Um, we went and played Auburn uh, in uh, 2018 uh, or it might've been in 2019. Um, and it had to have been 140 degrees on the field and it was extreme and it was an afternoon game. And it was extreme heat. And so unless you acclimatize to it, you're going to run into issues. So you just got to dose it, you know, gradually. Um, but you know what we used, because uh, we didn't have catapult football and the majority of our sports at LSU, we all use Polar Team Pro because it was, it was financially feasible to buy, you know, we had, you know, a hundred units. We had as many units as we had players and every sport had it, you know, so we were able to get polar team pro for everyone for the price of catapult or some other product just for football. So 
we would carry an iPad out on the football field and me or one of the trainers or one of the assistants, it was somebody different every day, but you could actually see the guy's heart rate in uh, real time and their heart rate was color coded by zones. And so during any break, whether it was a 45 second break or a two minute break, you could see the guys change colors. And uh, if a guy wasn't, uh, if, if, he, if his heart rate wasn't coming down, it would stay red because, you know, that's the, the work zone. Zone five was red. And so you could see when the guys were pushing it in zone through zone four, because it was orange into those max, you know, max intensity reps. If their heart rate wasn't coming down, the trainer or one of my assistant coaches or somebody was on it. It's like the red helmet right. stuff that y'all put on them. Our guys were identified by their heart rate. So you could always see, in fact, after two weeks, you knew who was in shape and who wasn't because their heart rate wouldn't come down, right. you know, between reps. And so that well, was I think cool. with coaching, like, you know, a lot of coaches don't one use their eyes. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, they're not, they're not, they're not paying attention. You know, they don't yeah. use their eyes. They're not looking. I can, you can look at a kid and see if he's distressed. He's or labor. You know? yeah. and, and then if, you know, the, and you got these guys who have, who have, you know, killed kids, because they just kept pushing them, kept pushing them, kept pushing them and going, look, it's one, it's not worth it. It is not right. worth it, period. Um, and, you know, so even if I thought the kid was soft and like just he's just soft and, and you know, and he's not going to ever push himself. Well, the kid's probably never going to play anyway. Exactly. So I'm going to pull. So I'm going to pull him. I'm going to pull him out just to be safe anyway. I'm going to use my head. I'm going to I'm going to keep my emotions under control and. You know, I, and I'm going to watch and keep an eye out on guys. And if they're if they're in a, in a situation where they're in some decent amount of distress, I'm, you're done. Yeah. Even if they want to come back in, because you have some guys that they, they'll struggle, yeah. but it's just because they're out of shape and they didn't do anything for a few weeks or whatever, and they're going to try to get. And I was like, no, 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 you're you're out until we until we can catch you up. Yeah. And a lot of coaches won't. They're they're they're. They, I think they feel the pressure from the, the football coaches to to the, you know, to push their guys you know, at a higher yeah. level that, Oh, if I make them, if I do this, it's going to make them tougher. But the way I feel is either, either you're tough or you're not, it's a yeah. choice. You have guys who are tough in the weight room, but they're not tough on the field. You got guys who can run all day and they're tough on the field and you put a ball on their back and they fold yeah. because they've made a choice on which way, where they're going to be tough. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're not going to run a guy into being tough. He might be in a, he'll be just be a little bit better shape, weak minded human, yeah. <laughs> but he's not going to be, he's not going to be tough. Yeah. You know? so, yeah. So I just, I don't, yeah. I don't bow, I'll never bow down to that. And I've had coaches come out and want me to, to do like yeah. more rep than what I was supposed to do. I'm like, no, yeah. I'm not. I, I turn around, I'll tell a head coach before you can do it. I'm going inside. Yeah. If you want to, you know, this is what was prescribed. This is where we're at. And, they can't handle anymore. I, we don't want them to handle anymore. They don't need to handle anymore. But if you want to run them for five more reps, I'm going inside. And if someone goes down, it's on you. And, and you know, yeah. And, and he, he stopped. He stopped. He goes, and because he, because I was adamant, I, yeah. you can fire me. I don't care. Yeah. You know? So that can cost you games also. Um, and you were talking about how hot it is here in the South. <clears throat> The type of fatigue that the result of that type of continuously running guys into the ground will last three, four, five weeks sometimes. Oh, like a brutal training camp down here has a long lasting effect because it doesn't uh it doesn't cool off here until October. And Sometimes it can go Late as October. deep as the second week into October yeah. where Easily. it's hot. Yeah. You so, know, and the thing is like every, and here's like, like, it's so detrimental. Like camp, camp is so detrimental to an athlete's speed because yeah. it's just, it's just, there, there's no, there, they have this, you know, such 
of, of a desire to come out and go hard the first five practices. Well, then after five practices of going two and a half hours of 25 periods or whatever of going in the heat with, with equipment on, and they're just, you know, after, after five days of, of that, their legs are done. Yeah. If we, we haven't had 10, uh, uh, soft tissue injuries because of, of the volume by week by, by day four and five, you're lucky. And their, their speed is just, just bottoms out within, well, well, that's just week one. Yeah. And you still got a no. month, you know? And so, but what happens is every coach typically in America, every football coach is doing the same thing. So every team is, is, is really slow on, on, on game one. So you don't really notice it because every, every team had a drop in speed. Because everybody got beat down. If you if you find if guys if coaches would just manipulate practices like we manipulate intensity and volume and training, where they can recover more, but they can't. Here's what it is: we have two and a half. We have two hours of of, of practice. We're going to use every minute, every single day, period, and we're never going to give them a break uh, because we can. And yeah. I think, you know, but they, but in NFL, they don't, they don't practice that way yeah, at all, you know? Yeah. And so if like, we'll do some speed work throughout the whole season. So I'll still even get, even when we're at the cotton bowl, I got four periods before, uh, before uh, a couple of practices to do yeah, before awesome. we started to do, to do our speed work, because if only certain guys are getting some, some true high speed runs and, mm -hmm. you know, in a game, and most of those guys are special teams guys or a DB who got smoked yeah. Yeah. chasing somebody. And so, you know, it's, if you, if we, we could ever convince football staffs to like, listen, like, okay, it, it's going to help us in the long run. If we're faster than everybody else on, mm -hmm. on the first week, it's going to help us win some games. Then, like you said, typically sometimes four and five weeks into the season before they get their legs back, so we have a five week window to be faster than everybody else yeah. because we have and, our legs and we're running at speed. And you know, today you have so much technology available to show coaches that, and I've seen changes as much as two miles per hour in, on, on a football team from going from one period of practice. I'm not talking about in, intra practice, but I mean, phases of the season where the average max velo can change as much as two miles per hour because the team is either worn slick and their velocity drops or the coach finally decides to back off and then the speeds increase, but, and you can show them, you know, and that's the good thing about having the information you can show people. But some people are just hard headed and they're not going well, to listen it, it's because it's they've always they've, done it that way. Or because they've won. Yeah. So because exactly. I've won, I've done it that way and won, that's the yeah. way. You yeah. know, that's that and there's no other way because we've yeah. won. And yeah. it's like you won and you won despite <laughs> Yeah, in spite of yourself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, so um you know, so it, it's you what happens though is too, like if you have a change in staff, so if you get like a new, especially on offense, defense guys, I find defensive uh, coaches listen more yeah. and are more apt to, to work around it. It's special teams coaches because, and they're going to, because they want to get their reps in, but then it's, it, it's at the expense of typically some receivers yeah. You know, yeah. with some long runs and plus they have to go do their position coach is not going to back off. But then if you get like say a new offensive coordinator, you gotta run, you gotta learn a whole new offense. So you've got you've got you're gonna run way more plays than normal yeah. because they're learning a new offense. Or you have a younger quarterback. Yeah. And right. what's worse is a younger quarterback yeah. with a new offense. Yeah. <laughs> so you're gonna really yeah. run a lot of plays. Gotta get those plays in, man. Where defense is the opposite. They're like, okay, they're more like, give us what we need and we're done. Uh, I'm not going to name any names, but we had an assistant coach that used to come. He used to come to me all the time and complain to me 
about goal line and short yardage, about how many, you know, how much time we spent on goal line and short yardage. And you only run go, you know, you might run four plays a game in goal line and short yardage, right. maybe four times. And, you know, you would spend uh, hours during the day planning for it. And then you would practice, you know, you would spend a 10 minute period twice a week going over goal line and short yardage. And you're only going to run four plays in the game, right. maybe if you're lucky. And well, so, well, yeah. I, I actually taught Coach Fritz in this year. It's like when we start out in camp, let's the first few days, let's just go red zone. Yeah. So, for, so we so we go short. So we yeah, shorten, shorten the, the field. Up. Yeah. So we shorten yeah. our load up, and yeah. uh, so we decrease the load a little. You know, by shortening the field. Mm -hmm. um, but we are a very heavy, heavy special teams type yeah. of program, and yeah. I mean we spend. And you got Coach Mack there a now lot too. You got. You got yeah, Coach Greg yeah. McMahon. And been Coach a Mack. Lot. Yeah. And and at the same time, but, but Fritz is a special teams guy too. Oh so, wow. You know, yeah. So we yeah, so we spend a lot. I mean, uh, like I mean yeah. our the one thing I can say, our guys know their job. Yeah. They you know, we're really very we're very good in special teams and they and rarely do we have any any kind of breakdown. Because they, yeah, those guys are good. so well trained, they know yeah. their job, and they're okay. smart too. But just add, they're smart, yeah. Just, you know, I mean, it is Tulane, but but it does add a lot to the player load because the yeah. distances you have to run. Yeah, and it's your best athletes that are doing it. You know, they don't put the bad yes. athletes on teams. That's always your best athletes <laughs> who have a high volume anyway. All right, like, so, I, I got a receiver that he, yeah. he walks into it every ahead. day like, during camp. And his eyes were like sunken in the back of his head because yeah. he ran so many routes and he had, yeah. to, he had to return so many balls. And yeah. I'm feeding him like 8,000 calories trying to keep him alive. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, those team guys have it rough, man. Especially if you're on the four core, uh, punt and punt return and kickoff and kickoff return. If you're on the four cores, it's, it's a tough job. Um, so let's get into some lifting here. And uh, we've talked about it some, which is really good. Um, uh, so your team has broken down tsunamis, and I like that. Uh, I like that because it's the green wave. So I like the tsunami, thunder, and yeah. lightning. Are those programs for those guys different? Uh, are there? I'm sure there's some similarities if, if they are, yeah. but how do you break it down by position? Well, I mean, like, you know, um, really, if my weight room were, were bigger, we, you know, the quarterbacks would be on a completely different workout. Yeah. Um, and, and I've done where they had their own, you know, where we yeah. modified you know, certain things with them and our, and our specialists would be on a completely different workout. It's just, we're, we're, we're tight. Everything we do yeah. is a tight space. So yeah, I bet we're down, we're down to three right now. And, yeah. um, you know, whereas, you know, our, our, our tsunami group, it's, it's all about power and absolute strength, you know, and mm -hmm. how fast can they move in a 10 yard, 10 yard box. So yeah. everything we do is, 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 is power based and developed uh, for their position where your thunder groups a little is a crossover between power and speed because you, you, you are moving more in space, but you still have to linebackers still have to come up and fit against guards and, and tight yeah. ends still have to block and, uh, running backs still have to come up and, and take on ISO blocks with linebackers. And, you know, so, and then your lightning is just, you know, I'll, I, for the most part, I just care how, how fast can they move, you know, how, yeah. how fast can they move in any direction? So we take off a lot of the, um, you know, I get off of back squats probably in by May with them. Yeah. Uh, unless it's like, uh, you know, I'm going VBT and it's all, you know, it's all, all in a, uh, um, a speed strength or our strength speed mode. Mm -hmm. um, mostly, uh, and we, we're super we work a lot on backside chain because you sprint from from the backside. So you know, heavy uh, backside chain. We pick everything up with isometrics with them uh, in in the different movement patterns that they run in. And so at the end of every workout, it's like we're heavy loaded on isometrics with with, with them. Um, so that there's just certain just it, a lot. There's yeah, a ton little, of yeah. There's a yeah. ton of crossover, but there's some nuances yeah. that are that are going to be really specific to kind of the movement patterns that they 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 utilize on the field. 
Yeah. I mean, it, it's a contact sport yeah. and every play yeah. ends with a pile, man. So, well, and, and that's why I've always had, I've always had a little bit of problem with block zero. Yeah. Uh, because if you hold back too much on block zero, well, the, well, those same freshmen are still going through camp. Yeah. And they're still going to go through the season. So the demands of the game are still the demands of the game, yeah. but now right. they're not ready for it. Yeah. So even on blo- like, even on a block zero, we, yeah, we're going to be very technical with, with, with certain t- very technical lifts and the loads will be really light uh, yeah. because we want them to be very efficient, but we're still going to train. We're still going to load them and yeah. we're going to, you know, and you know that, that, oh, well, you don't load dysfunction. Well, you got to load a little bit of it. If, yeah. if not, if not, they're, they're going to get, get their hurt. heads knocked off. Yeah. They're, yes. They're going to get hurt. They're going to get hurt. They're going to get hurt on the field. So, no, we're not going to, you know, take a six foot eight guy who can't squat, you know, six inches and load the hell out of him on a back squat. But we are going to modify and still get his legs stronger. And there's a lot of things you have to do with guys with previous injuries to modify, you know, to modify the workout too, based on the injuries they've had, you know, in the past. Um, yeah. uh, like we just got um, Jared Smalls. No kidding. He just came in last week. So, you know, two ACLs and then uh, yeah. an ankle. So, you know, uh, we're <laughs> really modify a lot of what he does. Yeah. You know? And, and uh, so, you know, there's, there's a lot of modifications going on and there's a lot of modifications that, are, that go on when you're evaluating them in movement in the lift, you know, yeah. I mean, if a kid can't, if a kid's like chronic with, with, with uh, flexibility and can't get a good rack, yeah. I'm not going to beat him to death trying to get him to front squat or clean. Yeah. We're just going to pull. We're just going to pull. And that's why I, I love Zercher squats. Yeah. All right. You're just going to put it in the crook of your arm. It's, it's roughly the same, except you have, uh, from a standpoint of stability, core stability, it's a lot harder. And for linemen, it's a, to me, it's a perfect lift. Yeah. Because when they lock, when, I, when a lineman, a fishing offensive lineman, when they lock onto somebody yeah. and anchor down, it's yeah. the same thing. You're basically in the same position, yeah. uh, stability wise. So, you know, it's like I said, there's certain nuances and there's reasoning behind why we'll do certain things in the lift for certain positions. But there's, just, you know, it's still a huge crossover. And, um, you know, it kind of goes to that question you asked me about, you know, can you be too strong? Well, yeah. if it inhibits, if it inhibits your speed, yeah. yes. Yeah. If, well, if, if, yeah. If it, if it inhibits your movement, yes, you can be too strong. Like, you know, it's strength is never a weakness. Yes, it is. Yeah. If, it, if it's going to inhibit their speed or their movement, it is a problem. And um, I kind of like, like, I hate when, when coaches say you have to do this lift. And, and, I, and no, you don't. And, you know, I, I, and growing up, I, I think some, some people think, Tommy, that I'm like against heavy lift and I'm not. Because our, you know, our, our tsunami group, they have to, they have yeah. to have high absolute strength. They have to have a, a generate, they have to be able to generate a high power output. Mm-hmm. But there comes a time where, where there's no return on it. And I had one year at Tech, um, like I had 12 guys who, who squat over 600 on one team. But they're all, I mean, it, it wasn't the workout. They're all genetically gifted. I mean, they're all built to lift. You know, they were all like, you looked at him like, okay, this kid's going to shorter arm, shorter leg. He's, he's built to, to, to lift. And we, because all those guys were starters and at, at the group of five level and below, all you have is starters. Yeah. Your backups is, is, is a three or a walk on. There is yeah. no, there is no, you know, you, you, every once in a while you have one position with the quality, with quality twos that you mm-hmm. can rotate. But for the most part, your ones they're staying in the game, the whole game, and they, they, they can't afford to get hurt. So um, from August to January, I didn't, I didn't squat the team. I said, you know what, from a central nervous standpoint and the load, the amount of stress it puts on the body, they're already stressed with 80 plays a game. You know, uh, we have a really, we have a really talented team with a lot of draft. I think we had seven guys drafted that year, which is for a group of five, a lot. Um, so, but we did like really heavy, uh, floor hip thrusts. We did really heavy. We, we did some, uh, some pretty heavy, uh, snatch pulls off blocks. 
We did some heavy, um, uh, ba- really heavy banded kettlebell swings. Uh, we did some uh, pretty heavy sem- sumo deadlifts. Yeah. The 12 guys were still 600 pound squatters in January. Yeah, I know. And that's so. And I took the lead off their back. Yeah, that's Louis Simmons' classic conjugate loading uh, periodization in, in 2019. Uh, now, if a guy was squatting good, if he was a backup or it was an open date and a guy was squatting good, we'd let him go heavy. But, you know, looking back in 2019, I bet you we didn't squat over 60% of our one RMs because everything that we did was velocity based. And now in deadlifts, we in sumo deads and cleans, and uh, sometimes some clean pulls, we hit some big numbers. Uh, but that 2019 team, I bet you we didn't squat over 65% uh, on average. Now, our our developmental players, they did. Yeah, that's yeah, different. But the guys that played in the game, I bet you we probably didn't squat over 65% unless somebody was on a heater, you know, and somebody's like, Coach, I feel great. And, you know, depending on who we were playing or it was an open date, I'd say, all right, I'll let you, you know, you can take a couple of doubles or a single here. But, man, it was all, you know, we uh, our sumo dads were uh, is what we used to train for strength and cleans. Right. And I think, so- I think from a central nervous standpoint, the way the brain reacts as far as like even in, in fight or flight with the bar on your back versus pulling off the floor. Yeah. Like our guys would pull, they would pull it pretty heavy. I mean, they were like, they, they would pull as much yeah. as I would allow them to pull yeah. without a thought process. Yeah. But during the season to, to put it on their back. Yeah. There's a whole, it's, you know, and, and they're like, God, cause I just feel God awful when yeah. it's on my back. And it's the same way when you take a kid who's like a really springy kid, who's like a DB or receiver, who's super reactive, springy, springy, springy. If you, if you, if you squat him a ton during, during the off, like during the summer, one, it doesn't feel good to them. It's harder for them to recover. But like even with the like like with the uh, quad tendon and all, it, it'll get a little bit overstretched and it decreases your power output into the ground. And so I really we 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 do a lot of heavy. We still lift heavy on certain exercises with our with our lightning group, but we're very careful to where we're monitoring their speed and we're making sure we're not taking a step backwards. Right. You know, because their game is purely a speed game. Yeah. And you know, DBs, you know, um, on both on, on on both sides of the ball, and we want our, we want our guys to be really fast. And I don't want to do any anything detrimental that's going to inhibit that speed. But at the same time, again, getting their body ready for the for the loads of of camp and for the game. So it, it's just, it's a balance, man. It is a balance, and you have to really, you know. Um, sometimes I think maybe I overthink and sometimes maybe I, uh, overprogram. I think, I, you know, I think I, I might get a little too intricate with it. Um, and sometimes I feel like I have to scale back and get a little bit more basic. Yeah. Um, you know, but if, if you're not, I think if you're not, if you're not doubting yourself a little bit, yeah. And, well- that's what Coach Hatch meant also about being in the eye of the storm. If you, if you don't have your finger on the pulse of the team, you know, as far as how they feel, uh, yeah. you're not doing your job. And there's so much more that's going on that has nothing to do with what you're doing in the weight room. And so I would always tell our guys, it's the sum of everything that you do that determines the overall training effect. It's not just – what we do in the weight room. Would I like to hit some heavy cleans today? <laughs> Absolutely. I love heavy cleans and heavy jerks, but that's not, you know, that's not what they need. You know, no, I mean, you need to be smart. And um, you are correct about heavy squats and speed. There is a time. If the simplest way to get faster is, in, is to increase the amount of force that you can put into the ground. But then at some point, enough is enough, especially when you're traveling, you know, in y'all's conference, you know, y'all travel a lot. There's a lot of traveling that goes on in college football. And that is a stressor Tulane academics is tough. Guys have got to study. That is a stressor. 
you live in the city of New Orleans. There's a nightlife there. There's an incredible, you know, there's a great, I lived there for six years. Yeah. I know, you know, and I was just right out of college. So I know what the social life in New Orleans is like. Yeah. I've been to fat, fat city, skinny city. I've been uptown, the French quarter. I've been to a mall. And so that is a stressor and you have to factor that in. If you're not, then you're not going to last very long. In this. You well, can- it's a, it's a, besides, you know, the, the city itself, you know, uh, the city of New Orleans itself about that, that stress. Um, the fact that, you know, girlfriend stress. Yeah. You know, the, you know, the most of our guys, we have to recruit nationally. So we got a lot of guys from all over the country, yeah. Well, they're pretty far away from home. And a lot of times they don't get to see their family. They have the family of stress. So you have guys who, you know, come from some families that, that, that struggle and they send a lot of their money home and, you know, the the stuff their families are going through at home and they're, they're dealing with it from a few hundred miles away. There's a lot of different stresses than, you know, friends getting murdered, you know, family members dying. And there's so, you know, and, and when, you know, for us, we have a room of 120 guys. A position coach has a room of 12, 15. Right. You know, so we're, mm-hmm. we're over 120 guys trying to manipulate and keep those guys, you know, moving forward and understanding th- those stresses. But at the same time, if you're not doubting a little bit of what you do, then you're really not thinking, you're yeah. not really thinking at all because, you know, you're, you're a little too comfortable, you know, I yeah. think in, in the processes. And a lot of, a lot of coaches are like, you know, they'll program something and they stay with the program without reading the athletes and communicating with the athletes. And there's like, like, like there are days where one athlete needs to back off a ton and, but you have, you haven't, you haven't read the athlete, right. Or you just, you just don't know how to read the athlete. You don't communicate with the athlete. Yeah. And you know, the one thing, especially during camp and throughout the season, constant communication on how these guys feel, what they feel like, uh, days that we can push, like I said, days we can push them a little bit harder days we have to pull back that we we manipulate what we write we don't stick to exactly what we wrote um one of my guys came from stanford one of my new coaches and he's like coach you don't program for the whole year i was like dude our coaches change their mind on a weekly basis where i've i've thrown away this summer's workout three times already and rewrote it i said why am i going to program for a year from now when i don't know what we're doing next week half the time you know, I said, no, I'm yeah. not programmed for the whole year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I lived through that, you know, f- and for the most part, and I know you're this way, it's 24 hours a day, 365 days out of the year. The first thing I thought of when I woke up every morning was the team. That was the yeah. first thing was the team. It's hard and to go. Into- you went yeah, it's hard yeah. to go on vacation and get out and get it. It's hard. even when I was in, in Australia, I'm on, you know, their time is way different than this time. Yeah. So my, our coaches were in the, in the, you know, in the office at seven, which puts me around three in the morning. So guess what time they're, they're communicating with me yeah. at three in the morning, <laughs> yeah. you know, from three to five in the morning. So I was never sleeping, you know, yeah. and it just, it was just no matter, you know, where, no matter who I've coached for, it's, it, it, you know, one, you're, you know, it's a 24 seven job. It's just, it is what it yeah. is. Um, like Matt Rea, cause you know, we practice the saints. I'll see, I see, I'll see Dr. Ray a lot. Yeah. And we were practicing the sprint this past spring. He goes, Kurt, I don't know how you do it. I, I would yeah. never, I, I couldn't go back to coaching in college. Uh, you know, and I, I'm like, look, man, I just, my kids are out of school. My kids are out of, you know, out of college. My kids are out of college now. So I'm like, you know, I turned 60 this year and I'm like, dude, I'll, I'll, I'll probably it's die. 60. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll probably <laughs> die. I'll die as a straight, you know, I want to be like the oldest dude that it, it was relevant in the field. Like I'm still yeah. coaching, you know, like in the eye of the Tom storm. Cross. That was Tom Cross. Oh yeah. Tom Cross. Yeah. From Nazarene. <laughs> Coach from Cross, Nazarene. Man. It was from Nazarene. Yeah. 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 From Nazarene. Yeah. Coach I Cross. Like, Coach I'll forever. Like, yes. I want to be like, you know, it's just, it's, I, I love it. I love the train. I love, still love the train. I love it every day. And it's just, you know, it's, it's something I, I, you know, I obsess about. And um, I don't think I'll ever be good enough. I think I'll always, 
you know, there's always more. I think there's some really bright guys in the yeah. field now um, yeah, really? who, grew up, who grew up in technology because I grew up, yeah. you know, we grew up pre-computer. And yeah. so, you know, that, that, you know, I'm learning a lot from, from those guys. But at the same time, you know, technology handcuff, will handcuff you. Data will handcuff you. Some, sometimes yeah. you have to just train. Some days you just go, you go in, you have to train. Yeah, you throw all that bullshit away and train because you've got to get the team ready. And, um, you know, being a super obsessive about data with 120 guys. If you're personal training a guy, yeah. You got five athletes, easily, more easily done. You got 120. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a whole different, it's a whole different world. Especially if you don't have the staff to do it. I'm the only full-time guy for football. I know. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's that, hard. Yeah. All right. So, and people don't understand that. Um, and so that was going to be my next question. All right. And it's been like that almost your entire career from yes. the time you were at LSU on, you've been, uh, the only, uh, most of the time you were the only full-time coach on the floor with your team. Yeah. And, you know, and, and I heard you, uh, you were talking about coach hatch, you know, uh, Zach Ebenesh, when he asked you about, you know, how did coach manage so many guys and, you know, coach had this little bitty calculator when Sometimes he'd pull out that little calculator and brrr with his thumb and give yeah. you a weight. But most of the time it came from up here. So my question is, what has that taught you? You know, being the only guy on the floor, what's, you know, how, what skill set have you had to develop? Because that, that's an, that's an art form to be able to do it all by yourself. And what advice do you have for young coaches or, or even not young coaches, older coaches who are struggling with that? Because a lot of people don't understand that. And I do because I know I'm, you know, I've, I've known you forever and, you know, I've been blessed now at Miami. It was just me and Andrew Swayze over football at Miami and, and then Rob Phillips also, I'm sorry. So we had three at Miami, but we all did other sports. I did. I had three sports when I was at Miami. Right. Uh, we all had sports. So uh, how have you developed as a coach by being the only guy in the floor? And do you have advice for the other coaches out there, the vast majority of them that are in a similar situation? I mean, even when I was at LSU, I had, I had football. I had men's basketball. I had men's baseball. I had women's golf. I had uh, women's soccer. I had cheerleaders. All by my, you know, all, every sport by myself except for football. And I was still like the main guy for football, especially yeah. outside, especially for the speed yeah. style. So it's, you know, one, just having to train that many athletes. It's kind of like being like a division, like a division two or division three coach. I mean, they yeah. have an insane amount of athletes. And that's why like one by 20 is like big with division two and division three. Cause it's, yeah. you know, one by 20 is easy to go through and you yeah. can still get, get really some really good results with it. And, you know, you hit 10 exercises, one set you're out and, yeah. you know, it's easy to manipulate a high volume of athletes. And I think it was just me understanding about being again in the eye of the storm yeah. and, Focus, like one athlete at a time. And, and I never stop. I, I, I could cover 10 platforms at one time. Yeah. And at tech, I had, you know, even with, uh, I had three interns and I well, first just two interns and me, and that was it. We we're the whole staff for every sport. And I could cover, you know, I would cover six to eight platforms by myself. Yeah. Um, and it's just constantly communicating and never stopping. Right. Never, never being, stopping. You never stop. Is I'm coaching. I'm co I go from one athlete to the next to the next to the next. Give minimum coaching cues. Yeah. I think a lot of coaches I've seen a lot of young coaches cue like 50 cues. I'm like, God, let the dude just do the Figure rep. It out. <laughs> let him do the rep first. You know, you you cued him like 30 times just now. He didn't even. He only heard the first one. You know, and so you know. 
train your athletes with the least amount of cues, you know, yeah. you know, get, get them to work the, 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 their, their, their biggest discrepancy first and then work down from there and, and tighten it up. But, you know, just get the, the, the basics down first. And then that's all you can worry about when you have that many athletes. Um, and so that it's just movement and communication and using your eyes. Like, you know, like, again, like even like, and when I had my own business, I was training 500 athletes a day in the private sect in, in, in Mandeville and 500. And I got to the point where I knew loads without, I never had needed a percentage. I knew where the athletes were. I can remember where, you know, where their matches were, you know, I, I, like I knew at a 50%, 60% study, I, you know, I would just look at it and go put that much on the bar, put this, and I color coded everything. So instead of going kilos, I'd be like, put a blue on the bar, put a green, put a yellow. I, I color coded the boxes, grab a, grab a, grab a white box, grab a blue box, grab a black box. Oh, wow. Everything was so I could just go fast <clears> and I color and it was just, and even to this day, I still do it. Like at Tulane, our 45s are green or 25s are gray. And I'm like, yeah. they'll go, Coach, what, you know, you know, athletes, I don't care how smart yeah. they are. Coach, what's 185? Put a blue and a gray. You know, I, I still go by, I, I don't even say 45 or 20. I still use yeah. colors in my head because I've done it for 30 years now. Yeah. And just, you know, it's because it's just quick. And so I just found little, little, you know, like, you know, just all these little tricks of the trade that make things quicker where I can communicate faster to the athlete and, uh, and, and get it done, you know. And I think the one thing, you have to have trust and our, our athletes, I told when I got to, to Tulane, I said, look, I'm not Kyle Spear. I'm Kurt Hester. I do, I do things different. I'm not saying I'm better than him. I'm not saying I'm worse. I'm saying I'm just different. Yeah. Give me two weeks to earn your trust. Yeah. Just give me two, just, just give me two weeks. Just, just do what I say for two weeks. Ask questions. I will tell you why. And, most of the time you won't even have to ask because I'm going to tell you the why first. And after about 10 days, uh, Nick Anderson, our starting middle linebacker, plays the Saints now. He's like, I said, look, I got just trust, you know, just trust me, coach. You've earned it. Yeah. We're good. Just tell us what to do now. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm never going to just tell you what to do. I'm going to tell you why so that you will go, you will, you will, you will perfect the drill and you will go harder on the drill because you know why it's going to affect you on the field. And, you know, and, and first it's, it's trust. You can be, you can have the best, you can have the best IQ, have the best brain as far as programming, build the first, the best program in the world, um, be a great technical coach. But if you're not, if you don't, if they don't trust you and you can't communicate to them, it doesn't matter. It, it, it doesn't matter at all. Um, I heard Johnny Parker say that exact same thing 40, no, not 40, 30, 35 years ago. He was talking about uh, his first, uh, his first workout the first time he was at the New York Giants because, you know, before hit me, you know, coach, coach Parker was snatch cleans and jerk and squats and stuff. And so he got a lot of pushback from the NFL players because I'd ask him a similar question, like, how do you handle this? How do you handle that? And he said, and he said, I do it with every player. I, and I would tell him, just trust me, do it my way. And I'm, I'm trying to quote him verbatim. He said, just do it my way for two weeks. And at the end of two weeks, if you don't see any benefit, then you can do it any way you want, but just try it my way first. And then let's decide after that. And I've always used that. And that is an incredible, incredible, powerful tool. So you're I mean, the second person I've heard. Well, even like when I trained Tebow for the draft, you know, I'm sitting in Nashville and, you know, he's flying all over the world, going to different personal trainers, you know, uh, interviewing him and stuff. And he was supposed to be uh, hit Nashville. He was supposed to be in my office at eight o'clock. And it's like 1130 at night. He's still not here. And like Jimmy Sexton, I've trained a bunch of guys for Jimmy Sexton. Yeah. And, he, you know, Jimmy, Jimmy had signed him. And, you know, and, and I didn't know he was coming in with a whole film crew. Like he, they filmed the entire, they made a movie out of it the whole time we trained. 
and I am who I am. I'm, you know, from South Louisiana. I'm gonna say what I want to say. I don't, you know, you like it, you like it. If you don't, I can care less. And uh, so he walked in, and it's 11:30 at night, and this boom comes through my door, like over my head. And he's holding a boomstick, and I'm like, I, I can't tell you. I don't want to say exactly what I said. It was a bunch of expletives, with us, and he sits down. Hey, I'm Tim T, and, and he goes, um, you know. And I'm pretty aggravated, and uh, you know, because it's so late, and um, been sitting around waiting on him. And we talk about training on. I said, "Look, man, at the end of the day, this is how it's going to go. I'm really, I'm pretty good in this field, and you know, once we start training, I'm going to find out. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a nitpick and find all these little things that are probably going to be wrong, and I'm going to have to fix them. And you're just going to have to trust me that, it, that, that, I'm, that I'm helping you. I know you're like super paranoid about everything you do. I've talked to Coach Mar uh, uh, Marodi at, at, at Florida before. We talked about you for two hours, about your personality, blah, blah. And I said, here, here how, how it's going to go. We can walk out on the turf field right now. And if I whip your ass, you do what I ask you to do. If you whip my ass, I'll train the way you want to train. And he goes, you would really go down and fight me right now? I said, bro, it's 1130 at night. I don't, could care less. If you, you know, I'll fight anybody right now because I'll, you know, and sit around waiting for you for four hours. Yes. yes. And he goes, sold. I'm training with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's funny. Great dude, too. Great dude. Yeah. So, so you ended up training, <laughs> training yeah. with me. Yeah. Just because I put it that way. And he yeah. went to like five to six personal trainers before that. And I think I was the one guy that didn't like bow down to him. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great, great dude. And that's when you were a D1 in Nashville. Yeah, D1 in Nashville. Oh, you know what? That reminds me when you were talking about the Pelican Athletic Club, you gave a shout out to Muscle Max. And, Zach, oh. and you remember the. Yeah, oh, yeah because, I, gave, because I, I bought everything from your wife. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you gave a shout out to Muscle Max, and uh, I laughed. Uh, so yeah, it's funny how it's not. I mean, it's it's no coincidence uh, because you know Coach Hatch, you know, was besides my family, my mom, my dad, my brothers, and a couple of high school coaches or junior high coaches, which is similar to your you know, your, your growth in this field too. our mentor, my primary mentor, coach Hatch, you know, there's just a lot of similarities that in our careers, a lot of parallels in our careers. Uh, so yeah, when you gave the shout out to muscle max, I laughed. Uh, that I thought that was funny. So we're getting to the end. I got a couple of questions that I want to ask you that are not off topic, but have really probably nothing to do with Tulane per se. And I wanted to ask you about hard gainers, uh, nutritional supplements, or anything that you recommend uh, that you know that works and that you have found that works with hard gainers. You know, guys that probably genetically are at the weight that they need to be at, but you know, in order for them to be effective and to reach, you know, uh, the starter, you know, to become a starter in the program, they need to put on some weight or add extra strength. Anything that you recommend? Yeah, the, every, every athlete, every human actually, you know, has a set point, you know, uh, like mine was in college was 180, you know, so if I gain, if I got to 200, if I drop my calories, at all, and, you know, my body would always work back to 180. Or if I, if for some reason I was didn't eat a whole lot for a couple of weeks and I dropped down to 175, you know, it would, it would always move back to 180. So every every human has that that kind of metabolic set, set point, and um, you know, that what's sad is you know NCAA screws everything up pretty much, you know, for all all athletes, uh, you know, that most of their um, Every time they enact something, it's usually det more detrimental to the athlete than, than helping the athlete. And, you know, still creatine is the most researched uh, supplement known to man. And uh, it doesn't, you don't cramp up when you take, you know, creatine. You don't, you don't lose any water, uh, water weight when you're on creatine. And, and, you know, as far as like, the, you know, 
being able to develop power and train at a higher level and which the, the more, you know, the more you, the, the harder you train, uh, your body wants, uh, you know, more calories. And so it's easier to eat more. Uh, it's, you're, you're always in a, you're always in a hung, in a state of hunger. Um, and you know, at, at LSU, at, to, at, at, uh, at tech and, and up until a couple of months ago, we, I never had a sports nutritionist. So it was, I was, I was certified in sports nutrition. And so I was our sports nutritionist and, what I do is I break down uh, their their diet for seven days. I look at what they eat. I you know talk to them about what they like to eat, what they don't like to eat, and then work backwards from 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 that point and try to get them to eat uh, at least six meals a day and uh, increase their protein. Uh, you know, a lot of servings. You know, thirty to thirty, depending on their size, like thirty to fifty grams. Because yes, your body can. Uh, absorb only a certain amount of protein per serving, but you need an inordinate amount to get to be able to absorb 30. So you need probably, you need 50, you need 50 or 60 to absorb 30. So if you absorb 30, you're probably only absorbing 15. If you, if you, you ingest 30, you're only absorbing 15. So uh, increasing their, 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 their protein intake. Um, most of it, I mean, everything we eat is so refined, you know, and, and garbage is trying to get them to eat, you know, and, and, and when you go to uh, eating a lot of, uh, you know, fresh vegetables, eating, you know, uh, you know, some good quality protein and fruits, well, then your, your, your caloric intake is not as high, you know, so you do have to supplement, uh, you know, with, with protein. And if you don't like vegetables a lot, then you supplement with a, with a, uh, a, a powdered, you know, greens, uh, you know, to help them get, get at least get something in. Um, and then like for our guys who are like super, you know, we got, we got some kids that are like 158 pounds, 160 pounds are receivers and DPs. Yeah. They're small. And I'm like, look, man, you can pretty much ingest almost <laughs> anything yeah. and you're, you're an inferno. And like the, and, and like the easiest thing, like when I, when I had to put on size was like, you know, get a, a, a loaf of bread, dump it out, make peanut butter sandwiches, put it back in the loaf. And then yeah. you got they're already made and then try to eat half of that plus all your yeah. meals throughout the day. Yeah. And so you have two days worth of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Um, and you know, and, and it's not the, the best advice. I mean, I gained weight because of Popeye's. Yeah. I would eat hey. 20, I'd buy 20 pieces of Popeye's and, and six biscuits and, and, uh, and knock it out. Yeah. To, to get, still was, you know, and because of genetics, I was still lean. You know, yeah. and most of our guys can eat, you know, Crisco oil and a stick of butter, you know, yeah. and they'd still be, it'd still yeah. be fine. But, yeah. but, you know, now, now we have a nutritionist. She breaks it down. Uh, she breaks everything down for them, gives us free advice. I, I'm always in the, in our, our grill with them because uh, yeah. I do all the checks. So I'm always with them looking at what they're, what they're eating, helping them out, uh, you know, on the spot, you know, yeah. while I'm there. Yeah, that helps a lot. Uh, so y'all have a dining hall where the the players eat, right? Right. It's it's in the stadium actually. It's like right yeah. right next to the weight room. Yeah, you know I I love. I mean, and I know it can always be better, but you know, compared to the eighties, uh, Tulane football has come a long way. Tulane athletics, you know, yes. and you had something on social media. I think it was you. Somebody put something on there the other day. It was the old Sugar Bowl Stadium and says, I can't believe that this stadium was on our campus at one time. Was that you that did that? It, is, you know, it wasn't me, but I, I saw the tweet. I mean, it's – who's I who remember the stadium. I mean, I remember, how yeah. big, I remember how big it was. I mean, it took yeah. up half the campus. Yeah, and so now, uh, you know, because we played a state championship there a couple of years ago with Catholic and uh, – Man, I love y'all's facility the way it is now with baseball and football being right there. Y'all having your own stadium on campus, man, that is so cool, so cool. When I was when I was GA at Tulane before I went to LSU, um, you know, we we played in the dome. Yeah, and you know, we go to the dome and there's, you know, we'd have maybe ten thousand people there and it looked like we had five people there. Yeah, and it was just it was it was it was bad. And, and, and Yeoman Stadium is really tight. Yeah. It's very tight. So everybody's like right on, right yeah. on top of you. 
And so 30, 32,000 people, like, you know, uh, we broke 10, I think 10 records this year. Like our, yeah. I don't know how many, but we broke every, every game we played, we had, we set attendance record, yeah. you know, That's all the awesome. way through, the, all the way through the season, uh, through the, the you know, we uh, played SMU at home on a Thursday night and still, I think sold out. And yeah. then, um, and then played uh, Central Florida for the for the championship game, and that was the the most anybody had ever you know the, the the most people that ever been in the stadium, even from opening day, yeah. whatever six seven years ago when they built it. Yeah, yeah. When uh, I remember we were playing, it's it's pretty cool. So Clay and Brady both won state championships on y'all's campus. Clay won a state baseball championship at Turchin, and then Brady. One one at Yeoman, so uh, it's Yeoman. So Yeoman. Um, I remember when Clay and them were playing um, baseball at Turchin Stadium. I was standing on the third baseline, and they had just started the stadium construction and all for the football field. And so I remember that you know, it, so it hasn't been that long ago since uh, they built the football stadium, and that's super cool. All right, um, two two more questions, and then we got to go. So, um, it, do you would you do anything different if you train women than men? From a standpoint in lifting, because of them, the way they derive their um, their energy and their and and their their the differences in hormone hormone levels, I think they probably uh, from from me training different different women's sports they uh, reacted really favorable to like medium heavy loads, you know, in that five to like five to seven range instead of, you know, that two to three range, you know, mm -hmm. and a heavy load with the male. Um, so from a standpoint of, of how I, I loaded them, the weight room was a little different because they could withstand it a lot. Uh, they, you know, they, 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 their bodies could withstand it at, at a higher level. Now they recover. They recover actually a lot faster on uh, on certain uh, training modalities. Um, adductors and abductors, as far as like QA and going all, yeah, I think I train backside chain chain a lot harder because of the propensity for ACLs. Mm -hmm. um, but and and do a lot of landing. He said a lot of eccentric work, a lot of a lot of landing work, um, a lot of a lot of different plyometric uh, work and at at a uh, different. Uh, in different planes, but for the most part, no, I mean, it, you know, you still, now the way I communicate is a whole yeah. lot different because yeah. when you get like super animated and all most 90% of females think it's comical. They just yeah. laugh. <laughs> yeah. You know, so they'll just laugh. So, but if you get what I find with most female athletes is that me working with them, my sense of humor has helped me a lot. Cause if I can get them in a good mood, they'll train really hard. Yeah. Now there's 10% that have a little more tests, a little bit more, a little more testosterone, testosterone in their body than the other females. And they'll go, they, they're super aggressive, you know? And so you can like yell at them and they like it. And so it's like 10% of the team, you, you gotta find, you know, you gotta, you, you find out who those girls are and you push them hard. The other ones, it's like, you make them laugh and they'll, and, and, and they'll do anything you ask them to do because they're having a good time. So it's just the, the communication process was different. Um, and that's really it. I mean, I think, you know, maybe, you know, I think a lot's been said about the, you know, about menstrual cycles and, and deloading and stresses and all, but you know, how many coaches really delve into that? Yeah. 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 Um, you know, Bud Sharniga, the guy that, you know, translated all the Russian text, he, he says a lot of the similar things about how women recover a lot quicker. And he's a big fan of the theme, the women's Chinese weightlifting team. And uh, he's fascinated by how hard those women work and the, uh, the load that they're able to handle uh, on a daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly span. And, and he'll tell you they work harder than the men's team does. But then too, like I said, because they can recover faster. Yeah. You know, That's and so, says, yeah. yeah, and so I think, you know, from that standpoint, I think I push like with, 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 uh, with, uh, I like working with soccer teams because, you know, just because of the, the speed aspect of it. Yeah. Um, and, and the, and the, uh, the, and the agility and the, and the coordination of the game. 
um, and you know, just working with them and look, you know, in you know, working with their lows, and they could just, you know, they they handled and recovered quick. You know, I mean, I never had them complain. I never came in and complained about. I don't know if I can go. I don't know if I can train hard today. It was like, yeah, hey, coach, what what, what are we doing today? And, yeah, I had and, women's track and field at Miami, and uh, I had men's and women's track. Our men's team was kind of man without the football players, but. The women's team, man, those those women trained hard. They had a great coach too, Amy Dean. So she drove a lot of that, I'm sure. But I love training a women's team, and and I really liked watching our women's teams train here at LSU. Uh, that was a big part of my day uh, because of how hard they worked, and they were just committed. They were just as committed as our football team was. You know, winning is just important to a. a woman and it is a man there's no difference you know a winner is a winner no matter what sex that you are so all right so i appreciate it man i really do uh this has been great uh yeah uh we didn't break a record either so we got it done in under two hours so i really appreciate your time it means a lot uh for you to be here uh and do this and um uh, so I, I really, I can't say it enough. I can't, I can't, uh, this is big. Uh, so I appreciate it. Uh, you can follow coach Hester on Twitter at the Kurt Hester and on Instagram at Hester Kurt. Um, please check out his book. Um, a great, great book. Um, I was going to pull it up, but uh, it's it's around here somewhere on the floor. But uh, uh, he's a published author and uh, a friend and a great strength coach. And the guy, hey, he just turned 60, man. So the guy's wise. Uh, when you hit that big 6-0, you get, you get a lot smarter all of a sudden. <laughs> um, but I can't thank you enough again, Kurt. I really appreciate you being on here. Thank you. Anytime, brother. We need to go kill something now. Yeah. Amen to that, brother. Amen. <laughs> and you got some acreage now too. So yeah. ho- hopefully you got some hopefully you got some deer on that property. There is. I've yeah. already I've already walked it. <laughs> <laughs> Good deal, man. Well, I'll be in touch with you. And uh, you know, I'm coming to New Orleans. I've got to go visit a couple of schools next week. Uh so uh, I may drop in uh, yeah. if it's okay with you. I don't yeah. I don't know uh, what time I'll get done, but uh, I may drop in if you're there. I'll I'll probably set it up with you, and if I got time, I'll come by and see you if it's okay. Definitely. All right. Good deal. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. For more information about the Moffitt Method program and everything that we have to offer, please visit our website, themoffittmethod.fit or email us at info at the Moffitt method dot fit. Thank you very much for joining us today and we'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.